Hello there, coming to you live from out the woods outside my house. It's me. <laughs> it is State of Japanese, June 2017. This might become a series. Um, now I've, I've studied Japanese for about three and a half years. And where am I in my quest to become fluent in Japanese? When I started, it was just like, yeah, I, I want to learn some, some Japanese, but I've, I don't have any illusion of, illusions of learning Japanese because that's impossible. Um, and I s still feel that way in a way. But I also made a lot of progress and learned a lot of stuff that like makes learning easier and like uh, shortcuts and whatever uh, methods. But it still feels like it's really an uphill battle because it seems just seems so daunting. So I've made a list, because I like making lists, of basically reasons why I think I can someday learn Japanese and I, why I can't. So first, well, number one, why I, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Where's that from? Based on a um, flashcard type uh, quiz that I did recently, I know about 700 kanji now. I used to say the number was about 400 uh, uh, six months ago or something. So that's quite a big of an increase. And I also realized with kanji that it, it helps help it helps it helps a lot to think of them as they come in as a, a, a kanji with a lot of parts in it, like split them up basically. Okay, so have you you have the kanji for tree, you have the kanji for like woods, which is two trees next to each other, and then you have kanji for forest, which has two trees and with one tree on top so you have like one two three and that, that's the case for a lot of other kanjis they have uh, you can sp in your mind split them up into bits up to usually four it's like a you have like a tile set of four and that so that's a way of learning a, a more advanced kanji without uh, freaking out too much on the other hand there are still way too many kanji to learn i feel I mean, 700, oh yeah, that sounds great, but there's two, still 2,000 for the uh, being able to uh, read a newspaper thing that they say. That's a lot. Uh, and the the little tiling method doesn't always work. Sometimes they just kind of look like a jumble anyway. I've realized that a lot of kanji that have one of the same parts are read, all, they're all read the same way. Not because every kanji has m multiple readings, but one of them, at least, is n almost always the same with, with a certain group. Like the one w one that starts with blue, and then you have um, blue, and it's the one in, in information, and there's the one in testicle, uh, ironically, and a bunch of others. Uh, and all of those share the reading se, which is nice, because then you could at least always guess with se first because you recognize that from a couple of them and uh, kind of similar with han you have the, the kanji for half but then you have handan the uh, kanji kanji for um, the word for um, judgment and then half of that one has han in it so it's like yeah uh, that becomes a lot of a kind of a shortcut on the other on the other hand again a lot of onyomi readings are sort of similar um, to each other um, Maybe because they come from Chinese, and Chinese is crazy. Uh, with kunyomi, the Japanese ones, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, I see the difference. It's easy difference between uh, kata and buta and um, kuruma and ringo or whatever. There's like, it's a little bit more variation. But when it comes to the, the Chinese reading, it's kind of like, okay, so choshi and chujo is kind of like, yeah, it's sort of similar. Uh, like I, I, love, I have a lot of problems with um, recognizing and uh, remembering the difference between yoso, yoso, yosu. Like they're so similar, so that becomes a bit of a problem. And the Chinese readings are almost more important. It feels right now, anyway, more important to learn those because you have all the, the compounds with a bunch of kanji, and you need to uh, be able to read those more than just a verb. And when you have you, you when you take the Japanese version, it's like a word, a verb, or or something. If you then you get that either way. If you you just learn vocabulary, so, so I don't know that feels a bit difficult. 
Number three, I'm starting to feel pretty good with uh, reading and understanding stuff. And that's a good feeling. But I am reading and understanding uh, stuff from a kind of limited sample pool or whatever. I'm reading uh, game guides and game manuals and game sites and that kind of thing. So I have like a comfort zone when it comes to reading and stuff. So if, if I, when I, or I just ordered something from eBay and it comes in a Japanese newspaper and I try to read something and I'm just hopelessly, I have no chance whatsoever. So I've, I've maybe niched, niched myself a little too much. So I feel a bit, of, pretty comfortable in, in my area, which is good. But I feel very uncomfortable outside my area, which is not good. Number four, I my vocabulary has expanded. Uh, also, it it sort of comes with trying to uh, read Japanese things, game related, as because I'm interested in games. It's harder to learn just a random word that I'm not interested in. But kekenchi for experience point that I saw in Final Fantasy One when I played it, it's like got it. Yes, experience point that goes straight into my memory bank. But something else just kind of I have to like push uh, to get it in there. It doesn't want to stay in somehow. But anyway, I do know more words now, and uh, I'm glad I do. On the other hand, uh, there's still like kanji. There's still way, way, way more to go. And I noticed that I'm. It's annoying because I'm better with Japanese to English than English to Japanese. So basically, I. See a word or like blah, blah blah, and what does this mean in English? Okay, it means this. Good. Um, but then it's like, okay, Yuan, what is uh, what is this in Japanese? And I'm like, uh, mm, uh, mm. and then I have to look it up. Even though if when I look it up, it's like, oh, this one, of course, I I know this, I've seen this a million times. But it's just the other way around doesn't. I'm not as good with with the other way around. I'm. I don't know. Maybe again because I'm. Focusing too much on reading. I don't know. So, with the scores 4-4, four, four, uh, the last one is unfortunately on the, on the other side, which, which is I'm still not good with talking. Because I'm still, you know, whenever, I, like in my video, the terror of uh, speaking or whatever I call it, uh, when I try to speak, e either it's some it's grammar-wise or it's vocabulary, I get stuck and then I feel nervous and then just like embarrassed and it's just... Uh, difficult in general. So with the, the score, 4 or 5, I guess it's impossible for me to learn Japanese. Which I don't really I don't really feel that way, but uh, I still don't have like the wind at my back and just like everything's just, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Japanica, fuck you. Yeah. However, if I can get my ass to Japan, get your ass to Japan in October, without um, getting sick again or sicker or whatever I feel hopeful because uh, yeah I don't speak a lot I don't speak a lot now but when I move to Japan I'm going to have to speak um, so and I mean three and a half I, I feel like I should be further in three and a half years but I've, it's been three and a half years mostly on my own and uh, a little italki here a little um, uh, language courses uh, here there but it's still kind of like learning light. But when I go there, it's going to be more learning heavy. Um, not super heavy, but in more definitely more heavy because it will be daily and it will be like tests and blah, blah, blah. So I think on that year, I'm going to progress more than I did have done already by these three and a half years, sort of. Because maybe not quite as much because the stuff becomes harder, but whatever. I'm hopeful for the future. Gambate!